Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in on my newest video. So in this video I'll be showing you how I've made this glow in the dark YouTube button for reaching 25,000 subscribers. So thanks to everyone for, of you guys for subscribing to my channel. So I did the other video is for 10,000 subscribers. In case you missed it, there should be a video popping up right here. So that video did extremely well. We get over 600,000 views and over 10,000 thumbs up. So that's pretty amazing. I hope we can do better with this one. So I have a new extra little announcement for every 25,000 subscribers I'll be making a new video. So the next milestone will be 50,000 subscribers. So the faster we reach it by you guys subscribing and sharing it on Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, keep going on. So uh, just share it, like the video and we'll see how far we can get it with this one. So for um, 50,000 subscribers I'll be making a new video. So if you follow the line of the awards given by YouTube, it's 100,000 would be silver, then you have 1 million for gold, 10 million for diamonds, and now there's a new one, 50 million with a ruby button. So that was given to PewDiePie for reaching 50 million, so that's pretty amazing reaching 50 million uh, subscribers on YouTube. But if you follow the line, I will be making 50,000 subscribers, so should I go for a ruby one, 50,000, 50 million? Uh, I hope you get the link. Uh, if you have other IDs, write it down in the comments below. Here's like a little extra. I'll be giving away uh, a few of these carbon fiber buttons for you guys who comment down below and like the video. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Enjoy the video and um, yeah, just have fun. Watch the video. Hope you like it. So here's what you can expect from this tutorial. So I'll be casting the mother molds using some vacuum casting epoxy resin. From that mother mold, I'll be casting the uh, silicon molds. And out of that mold, we will be able to get the glow in the dark button. So um, here's a bit more about the base plate. So the base plate is quite a complicated process because I try to challenge myself, but you can just skip this step if you don't have like the gear and so on to do it by just using a wooden or aluminium plate uh, instead so i'll quickly guide you through the entire process by narrating everything on top of this video so to start off with i already had the mold from a pre previous tutorial i made so pop up sh the video should pop up on the left side corner so i'm applying some release agent to make sure that i'll be able to remove the mother mold I'll be making out of this mold. So the first step is to make a flange using some modeling wax. So I'm just putting a quick flange all the way around it. So I have um, an entire flange while casting this part. Um, and then I'm just smoothing everything out just to have a nice finish on these edges. Then I took two um, wooden pieces just to level everything out. So it's a bit more in the air and I know now the entire top surface is to the levels. Because I'll be casting it and it's a resin so it will self level. So I have some mold form, I have some vacuum casting epoxy resin, I have the degasser that I won't be needing but you will see it later on in the video and um, some safety equipment like the mask and the gloves. So I'm just pouring some mold form into the mold shape. It's, it's just to you know the volume, so you can use some rice or some sugar instead if you don't have the, the mold form. But I just think it's easy to measure out volumes. And it has some other use as well, you can find the product in the description down below. So by doing this I now know the volume that will be needed uh, to cost this entire piece. So I just marked it off on the cup and then I pour everything back and everything can be stored again and used later on if needed. So here I'm changing, uh, putting on my safety gear and then I'm using the vacuum casting epoxy uh, resin from Easy Composites and it's uh, it has some aluminium in it so it's quite, it's, it's a thick resin and that's why I won't be needing the degassing cham chamber later on um, because it's too thick to degas probably and uh, it's not really needed to have like a nice finish on the part. So here's the A part and now it's the B part. So just don't drink it, it's, don't drink it, it's not a good idea. Um, and then I'm just doing the measurements uh, that you can find, it's 106. So um, 
if you're using 100 grams you put six grams of hardener so here's a good trick if you're mixing resins and so on it's a good idea just to do like two minutes of mixing that's what i always do just to have a proper mixed um, resin so i'm just pouring it in um, from pretty high so that you can remove any bubbles and then i just go around to level everything out uh, as you might have seen i have some leftovers is because i had another project i had to do as well so then i just let it cure for normally it's stated at 12 hours but it's always better to just do it like 24 hours or so so i let everything cure i post cured the part so i put it into an oven at 90 degrees uh, because i will be using this part as well later on for um, high temperature moldings and so on but it's not really needed if you're just looking to do what i did in this tutorial so here I'm a bit shocked about the results and this is some modeling wax that melted all the way through into the molds. So um, I was shocked but the results are quite good and it's probably mostly about the temperatures are I post cured the parts on after all. So the next thing you can do is just clean it with some hot soapy water and then I'm just using the Easy Composites mold cleaner just to remove any contamination that might be left into the parts before I will be sanding off all the edges. So I'm using my permagrid tools. Um, it's quite good to do some rough um, filing and so on. Um, but li like you will be able to see in the next step, I'll be making a, a, a box all the way around to cast the silicone in. So this wasn't really needed, but like in all composites, parts you make, it's pretty important just to have some nice tools uh, to avoid problems later on. So I'll be using this mold later on and uh, just wanted to be sure that all the edges are smooth without uh, interlocking pieces and so on. So because the mold was already pretty good, I only had to do some 1200 grit sanding. But here is a very important step. Uh, silicon can be sanded. so. The surface finish will be exactly the same as the modern molds you have here. So if you have some defects and so on in your mold, it's always better just to start sanding with like 400 and go all the way up till 1200 or, or even more if you want to. So you can go to 2000 and polish everything out like I did right here. So here's the result of the casted part. So it's nice and shiny, uh, no imperfections. And now we're ready to do the step of the casting of the silicon. So I'm making a flange all the way around. So this could have been done uh, the same instead of the wax I did in the first step. But I just tried to include the two ways of doing it in this video. So the first one was with the wax and now I'm doing flanges with some tooling boards. So um, I'm just hot gluing everything tightly onto the molds and then put a second layer of tape just to be sure that with the pressures, uh, the pressure of the, the pressure, sorry, about the silicon that will come on top uh, won't bleed out and leak um, on the downside of the part because that would make a bit mess and will be make it very hard to clean everything. So uh, this is what you'll need. You will need a degassing chamber. It's not, um, that important but if you really want to make some good parts it's good to have the degassing chamber and the vacuum pump so i'm using the full package package so this is one kilogram of um, of silicon so it's 910 grams of the silicon rubber and 90 grams of hardener um, so i'm mixing everything i also added some tinted uh, pigments into it just because it, like it's YouTube so I, I decided to make this mold red but you can pick any other colors uh, if you want to or just don't add colors so what I did is I have two cups and just mix them over because it's very important to make sure that all the resin is fully mixed into the cups so the, the second step of having two cups is that the, the gassing process will make the silicon expand like five to ten times in volume so here you can see all the tiny bubbles are being like pulled out out of the resin and or expanding under the vacuum so uh, if you would put marshmallows and so on into a vacuum chamber you would also see also see them expand so um, that's why i'm using this 
Uh, here is my Snapchat. If you want to follow my daily process on projects and so on, you can follow me on there uh, as well. So here I'm just removing all the pressure. So I'll be able to remove the first cup out of the degassing chamber. And as you can see, like no bubbles are left into the silicon here. So now it's time to put the second cup into it and just repeat the same process. And that way we'll be able to make sure that no air is trapped into the silicon. So here I'm just pouring the silicon into the molds. And as you can see, I'm pouring from one side and just let it self level um, all the way above the part. So what you're aiming for is around two centimeters uh, around the part that you're making. So as you can see in the second cup, I have a spare part that I also try to use. Like if I have some leftovers, I can just pour the leftovers of silicon in there. So here's the demolding. So no release was used because it's silicon and silicon is self-releasing. So um, I'm getting a perfect silicon mold out of that part. So and here's the second mold. So it's a little skeleton. I always try to use if I have some leftovers from resin infusion, resin infusions from other projects I use this mold just to have like a skeleton instead of a cup filled with resin so um, here I'm also removing the first part and that will be clear later on why I did this first uh, epoxy infusion resin part um, just to know the volumes needed to cause that piece so now I'm just measuring out all the dimensions of the first play button I made because I was quite happy about the dimensions I used there and I'll be using a 3d core um, net in between so um, here I'm just trimming out all the sides measuring everything out so it's exactly the same as the first YouTube button I made uh, with carbon fiber so a good tip is just use a fresh and clean uh, knife just to cut through it because otherwise you get some some bad results and I'll, I'll try just to make like a nice and clear cutting line so for this that might surprise you I'm using some fiberglass fiberglass is much cheaper than carbon fiber that I use in most of my tutorials um, but I will be tinting it with black so that's why you see a black um, backboard behind the YouTube button is because it's tinted resin being infused into the fiberglass. So I'm cutting four layers of 200 grams fiberglass and I'm just cutting the peel ply here. And uh, the peel ply will enable you to remove all the vacuum supply coming on top, like the infusion mesh you can see in this shot. So the infusion mesh is used to create a nice and even vacuum and get a good flow of resin all the way through your parts. So take some good precautions while cutting everything out and be like clean in your cuts just so you have good results because um, the vacuum bagging and the tape will come all the way around and just make sure that you have enough, enough space to put the vacuum bag all the way around so here are the two layers then there's the core and then on top you will see two more layers followed by some peel ply and fusion net and as you can see I used a glass plate glass plates are just perfect to do some infusions on because the surface is perfect make sure you use uh, some of these agents because you will be able to remove the part after that if you don't use it you won't be able to remove it so here's a quick overview of the layup here are the connectors so I put one connector on the infusion net and one connector is outside of it with a bleeder fabric down below so that will absorb any excess resin um, after the infusion so this is the uh, spiral tube and the spiral tube will make sure that there's a good flow of air all the way around and also distributes any excess resin uh, all the way around the parts so now it's it's the time to use the tacky tape so if you need to buy some stuff tacky tape is probably the most important thing I tried it with double-sided tape and you won't get uh, a perfect seal with double-sided tape so this is the most most important uh, material right here uh, to make sure you have a full vacuum on your parts so this is the vacuum bag 
So the vacuum bag will make sure that under vacuum you compress all the layers tightly against each other. So this is quite important to get a good piece. But like I said in the beginning of the video, if this is too much for you, you can just use a wooden or aluminium plate to put your button on because the silicon casting and the casting of the part is probably the most easiest uh, thing about this tutorial. So I'm pulling the vacuum onto the, the part here and like mostly you will have some leaks but you just go all around the part and make sure you have a full vacuum onto your part. So how do you know you have a full vacuum? It's just you wait two hours if the part is still tightly into the back you're sure you have a full vacuum. So what I'm doing here is I'm cross cutting uh, with a Stanley knife through the back and then just put the hose all the way through into the into the back. So here's a good thing about having casted the first part with some excess resin I had from another project is that now I know the exact weight that will be needed to cast um, that button. So here I'm mixing some infusion resin. So this is not casting resin, but the cool thing is you can use it for resin infusions and you can cast pieces with it as well. So I mixed two batches, one will be for the YouTube button and one will be for the plate. So I got some uh, pigments from luminarsolutions.com uh, where you can find all, type, all types of colors uh, of glow in the dark powders and so on. So here you can see I have a blue one and a green one. I used the blue one, uh, it's a personal choice. Uh, leave it down in the comments if you think I should go for the green one. Um, but I'm quite happy with the blue one. So as you can see, it's like a sandy type mixture and then you just mix it all the way around. So you have like a nice and even finish. So that's for the YouTube button and now it's for the infusion. So it's tinted with black just to create like that carbon fiber-ish looking plate. So uh, the glow in the dark powder is charged by light and in the dark you will see it, it glow. So here's an extra tip I'm using. I'm just using some uh, glow in the dark powder onto the silicon molds to have a better finish. So I've seen some guys using some ba baby powder and so on just to have less friction between the molds and the resin being cast into it. I'm using the glow in the dark powder and it worked just fine. So um, just some taps around the molds to make sure there are no, no air bubbles trapped inside the part. And here is the time for the infusion. So the resin is sucked all the way through, through the laminate and the core and will be pulled out from the other side. So the idea here was to add some glow in the dark powder into the back plate as well. But as you can see, the glow in the dark powder was too heavy to be sucked all the way through the part. So that way, that's why it wasn't working, but I'll be looking into it if I can fix it or sort it out, how I can do it. Uh, so here's 24 hours later, the entire plate cured um, and now it's ready to be demolded. And this is the result you're getting. So you're getting the same shine as you have on the glass plate. So um, like always, mold surface is the most important thing in everything you do. So here I'm just removing the parts from the silicon molds. Quite easy, no release agent was needed because uh, silicon is self-releasing. So here I'm finishing the back plate. So um, I was like hesitating between leaving it high gloss or standing it to a, uh, it into a matte finish. And I think like the matte finish just looks awesome because you have like the pattern of the core um, all the way through the plate. So here I'm rounding off the edges. I'm using a one euro coin just to, to create that rounded um, chamfer all the way around. Now it's time just to add the sticker. So here is a YouTube sticker being applied onto the back plate. And just waiting till I'll hit that 25,000 subscribers. So it's in fact it's 25 plus one. Um, so I was pretty happy being behind my computer seeing this. So um, now it's the final part of the assembly. So uh, it's assembling the back plate with the button. So what I did here is drill a hole through the through the button. So it, this is like more a pilot hole. So it's a small drill. I think it's around five millimeters. 
and once that is done I can go with the bigger drill it's 10 millimeters um, with some tape on top just to make sure that um, I don't go too deep into the part because that would be a disaster if I would go all the way through um, that part so once that was done I was able to put the aluminium uh, rods uh, through it so once it fitted and then I'm just mixing some epoxy two parts um, from a local brand uh, Potex I don't know if you know it but Easy Composites has some special epoxy uh, two components um, adhesives as well so here is a trick on how I include it like how I transfer the two holes that will be needed to be drilled. So I just use some marker, um, put some marks onto the two rods, put some flash tape on top. And I just I can just transfer the the entire um, two holes on top of that top plate, the back plate. Sorry. So um, now it's just time to drill the two holes. Just using a univer universal bit to go through the fiberglass and the core. Uh, and then I'm just using some spacers. And that will give the, the right space between the back plate and the, the YouTube button. Because that will give like a good result if it's offset of the back plate. So then I turn the entire plate around and then I can just glue it on and fix it onto the back plate. So I left it for a few hours and this epoxy cures at like at 25 degrees, it's around two hours. And then you're just ready to, to mount it onto the wall. So um, I'm spacing everything out, make sure that I have the, the right dimensions. And I can just put it onto my wall and, um, and I have to say I'm pretty happy about the results. I don't know what you think of it. But um, I'm pretty happy, um, so leave a comment down below of your, um, your thinkings about this project. So thanks for watching and I see you guys later.